I'm a big fan of chicken wings and I like my chicken wings crispy and soaked in sauce. Two things which generally don't play well together. But today I want my cake and to eat it too. So we're gonna to attempt to make super crispy chicken wings that won't easily get soggy once we soak them in the sauce. And we're making three sauces. The classic childhood favorite buffalo sauce, teriyaki sauce, and a super secret sauce that we will reveal later. But before we get into that, we need to prep our chicken wings. So let's just jump right into it. These have been sitting in the refrigerator all night in salt. And I started the prep on these yesterday. We get a large sheet tray out, preferably with a wire rack. Now I got about four pounds of chicken. They are separated from the drumette and the flat, but if they're not, you're gonna have to do that yourself. And just arrange them in a single layer on the sheet tray and then begin to just slightly season them all with salt. And then pop those in the fridge uncovered overnight. Now I like doing this better than a wet brine, simply because moisture is the enemy of crispiness. And if we give the chicken some time to just naturally dry out a lot of that surface moisture, then that's just less moisture contributing to the sogginess of our breading. Plus the salt that we applied to it, it's gonna flavor the chicken really well and act as a tenderizer. Now that these are done, we can set them off to the side and prep our breading situation. Now, if you're a friend of the show, you would be familiar with the fish and chips recipe we did over the summer and the way that we achieved the very crispy batter for our fish and chips. We're gonna take a little bit of influence from that. The two basics are 50-50 all-purpose flour in either potato starch, tapioca flour, or rice flour. This is gonna aid in super crispy texture. The all-purpose flour helps the color development. It has protein in it, so it browns a little better. And then a little baking powder for some leavening. Go about two cups of flour, two cups of potato starch. About a tablespoon of the baking powder. And we're gonna go in it with a good amount of salt. Probably about a tablespoon of a fresh cracked black pepper. That's a lot, so be patient. Then about a tablespoon of paprika, tablespoon of onion powder, tablespoon of garlic powder, tablespoon of Italian seasoning, and just like a smaller amount of cayenne. Maybe a teaspoon. Then just break up any clumps and stir it to combine. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add most of the flour into here where we're gonna do a final dredge and leave about a cup of flour in here to build a bit of a wet batter. So we're gonna go in with the wet batter into the dredge and that's gonna create the strong breading that's gonna stay nice and crispy. So what you're gonna wanna do is take up all but one cup of flour and put it into that larger bin. So it's gonna be about three cups of flour into the large bin, one cup in the bowl. So we got about three cups in here and this is about a cup of flour reserved. Set this off to the side for now. I'm gonna take a little bit of vodka. If you wanna know why, go back and watch the fish and chips video. Maybe like a half cup. And if you don't have vodka or you don't wanna use vodka, just replace it with water. Otherwise, I have about a two cups of water here and I'm gonna just slowly work in the proper amount. I'm going for like a, a cream consistency. So I ended up using about one cup of water. And if it's ever too thin, you can just grab a little bit more of that dredge, add it back in and whisk it till it's the right consistency. If it's too thick, you could thin it out with a little bit more water. I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator for maybe like 30 minutes just to let it get cold again. Always good to use cold batters when frying. Plus we gotta work on our sauces and get the hot oil coming up to temperature. Here we've got like probably the ultimate wing sauce, which is buffalo sauce, at least in my opinion. And right here we have a very simple teriyaki sauce. Now we've made these sauces before, but let's just give them a quick recap. Now back in the day, I used to try and get a little cute with my buffalo sauce, adding all sorts of stuff that really wasn't necessary. And what I've learned is that the best, most classic buffalo sauce is one bottle of Frank's Red Hot. Throw that into a pan and bring that up to a simmer. And once it's hot and simmering, you're gonna take a half of stick of cold butter. You're gonna turn the heat off and you're gonna start to slowly whisk in that cold butter a little bit at a time until the color lightens becomes more of a bright orange. The flavor has sort of mellowed out a little bit. It's still spicy. It's just this very pleasant, smooth, really universal hot sauce that's hard not to like, and it's not gonna blow your face off spicy. We're gonna pour that into a bowl, and we're gonna cover it up and let that sit in the fridge to cool down. 
Next, we have a teriyaki sauce, which is a very simple ratio of one part sugar, one part soy sauce to one part mirin. I did a half a cup of each. You could also add garlic, ginger, and scallions to steep it in, and you'd strain it all out at the end. And just let the whole thing cook and simmer and reduce for 10 to 20 minutes until you can take a spoonful of the liquid, pour it into some sort of plate or glass, and you'll be able to see it cool quick enough to see what the final consistency is gonna be like once it cools. You just want it thick enough to coat your finger or to hold a line on the back of a spoon. And once that's done, we get that into a bowl and we can store that the same and we've got our sauces. Now these two sauces are great and we're gonna make wings with them, but there is real magic when you combine the two to make a buffalo teriyaki sauce. Now if you grew up in Westchester like I did, you know of a place called the Candlelight Inn and they're known for their buffalo wings and their buffalo sauce, but one thing they're also known for is buffalo teriyaki wing. The combination of the two, it's spicy, it's sweet, it's an incredible combination, and that's what we're gonna make today. And it's really super easy. All you gotta do is, in this bowl, combine one part of the buffalo sauce with one part of the teriyaki sauce, and then stir that all together, and you get a beautiful buffalo teriyaki. The amount you want is up to you, it's just basically a one-to-one -one ratio. I'm telling you, this is crazy good. You're gonna wanna try this. I like to throw them in some nice little squeeze bottles just to make it fun to throw it all together at the end. Now you can kinda have fun and make one chicken wing three different flavors. Now I've just got a big heavy bottom Dutch oven on the stove. It's about halfway filled with some frying oil, some canola oil, vegetable oil, whatever you have on hand. You kind of need a lot, so don't go crazy on something super expensive. I used about most of this 3.2 quart thing of oil. We're going with the double fry, so we're gonna bring that temperature up first to 325 degrees to 340 degrees. That's like the range we wanna cook the first batch of. So just gonna let that heat up, it's gonna take a minute. So now I've got my batter, and my dredge. First chicken wings go into the batter, then the dredge. Now if your containers are big enough, you can kind of do this all in like one big batch. You can throw them all into the bowl, toss them into that batter, get them all well coated. And what you want to do is take some of that batter, pour that into that dredge, and then just get all the chicken wings into that container. I probably push the limit on the amount of chicken I can fit in this container. It's probably nice if it was a little bit bigger. And you just want to toss the chicken wings into that dredge and really get them very well coated. Coated. You can probably sprinkle on some more fresh flour on top of this. The real goal is to just make sure that there are no wet spots or bald spots. You want that chicken to hydrate that flour, to cake it onto the meat, but to still have dry flour coating all parts of the chicken. And all this sort of aggressive tossing is gonna help create little craggly, crispy bits that we want. Once you've achieved that, you wanna just let that sit and absorb for like 15 to 20 minutes. Now we're gonna let these hang out and we're gonna let that flour and that dredge hydrate. And if at any point before we fry it, we see that there's like a wet spot on the chicken, we're just gonna make sure that we coat it again in flour. If there's no more real flour within the dredge to add to it, just use some fresh flour on top. Just make sure there's no dry spots and you're gonna be very pleased with the end result. Oil is just coming up to temperature. We're gonna let it come up to temperature, 325 to 340, and then we can begin frying. I'm also gonna be serving these with blue cheese. Blue che a creamy blue cheese goes with wings. I don't care what flavor they are, in my opinion. We've already covered it on the show, and if you don't wanna do frying wings and you're gonna serve a bigger audience, I have a recipe for oven-baked crispy buffalo wings with blue cheese that I'm gonna link down in the description so you can get a recap on everything and get that blue cheese recipe. And now before we get into frying, we need to talk about gut health thanks to our sponsor today, Ombre Lab. You ever have a health issue where you got symptoms and you can't really figure out the root cause to it? Maybe you're struggling to maintain a healthy weight or maybe you're just always sick. You got skin blemishes like acne or eczema or even just your happiness or your mental health is struggling and you can't figure out why? The answer could literally be in your gut. Your gut contains trillions of bacteria, both good and bad. And when your body doesn't have enough good bacteria, the bad bacteria flourishes. And when that happens, you can start developing a range of symptoms like the ones we just went over. That's why Ombre Lab is really cool. They make it really easy to measure your gut health by offering an at-home test that can measure your bacteria levels by testing 
you poop. The test will ship straight to your door with easy to follow collection instructions. And then you just pack it, seal it up, and then you ship it out and wait for your results. Upon receiving your results, Ombre Lab will give you a detailed breakdown of your gut bacteria, the health issues it may be causing, and what specific foods you need to consume more or less to improve your health. And with a subscription, they'll even develop personalized probiotics to heal my gut. So if you're struggling with any of those symptoms I mentioned before, and you wanna see if your poo has the answers, visit tryombre.com backslash not another cooking show to get 30% off your first test. Now back to the recipe. Now, as you can see, as the flour is dried, it's formed these like clusters that are gonna be super crispy, but it's also created some bald spots that we just need to cover up with a quick layer of like fresh flour. I'm just gonna spoon some over the top while our oil comes to temperature. Now we know that when we add the chicken to the oil, the oil is gonna drop and cool down. So we're really aiming to drop the chicken in about 350 degree oil. Once it's around 340, 350, we're gonna take that chicken and just run it through that fresh flour real quickly and then drop them in two at a time and we're gonna cook them in batches of about eight at a time so we don't cool the oil down too much. When you add the chicken, I like to just kind of hang them in the oil for two, three seconds before I drop them in just to kind of set that flour freed up some space in the container. So I give the wings a little toss just to completely recoat them in some of that flour. And then we wanna just use our thermometer. We wanna regulate the temperature. If the temperature gets a little bit too hot, I'm gonna turn the heat down. And if it gets a little bit cool, I'm gonna turn it back up. And after the chicken is cooked for about five to seven minutes and it's lightly golden brown, we can get them out of the oil onto a wire rack to cool. And then we can go ahead and continue to fry these batches. Now this is the first fry, and the secret to this recipe is a double fry. And what this first fry is gonna do is it's gonna get it crispy, but then we're gonna let it rest for about 20 minutes. And during that rest period, a lot of that moisture is gonna seep out and sag up that crust, which is what we want. We're kind of hoping that any moisture that's gonna seep out and sag up the crust happens in, in this stage of resting. And while that rests, we're gonna get that heat up to about 380, 390, hoping that it settles around 375 when we add the chicken. And once it's at that temp, we're we're gonna fill up the pot of oil with some chicken wings. Bigger batches than before because these aren't as cold as they are out of the refrigerator. And then we're gonna sort of do a final flash fry at this higher temperature to really lock in and firm up that crust. We're gonna take them to a, a darker golden brown. And once we're happy with the color and the crispiness, we're gonna let them cool in the wire rack and finish the final batch or two. Once they're all fried, you just wanna let them dry on a cooling rack and then we can get them sauced up. It's juicy, it's tender, it's crunchy, it's got flavor, it's beautiful. Now we can get them sauced. First off, buffalo. Teriyaki. Now the buffalo teriyaki. See that crunch? Clean. The buffalo is delicious, obviously. The teriyaki brings out a little sweetness, which is nice. And now for the buffalo teriyaki. That's the perfect combination. The spicy with the sweet can't be beat. And of course with wings, you need a nice blue cheese dressing. Now again, the baked buffalo chicken wings recipe and the blue cheese recipe are gonna be linked down in the description. But you can't have wings without some creamy blue cheese. Our crispy chicken wing mission was a success. And what do you know, the soup ball's right around the corner. It's probably the perfect thing to make. Pre-cook them all until everyone's ready to eat and then blast that fryer. 10 minutes, you throw them in for that second fry and you're ready to go. It's easy peasy. All the recipes associated with this are gonna be linked down in the description. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself. For more yummy recipes, I got a few more on the screen like this delicious fried fish and chips. You gotta try this crunch, just take a listen.